It is Wednesday, October 20th, 2021, 7.05 uh, p.m. and we'll call the Economic Development Commission meeting to order. Uh, present from the commission are myself, Renee Deli, Laura Parker, Cody Thompson, and Mike Massini. Um, we have a few items on the agenda. Um, the first one uh, I can talk to is uh, an update on the home rule petition. And this is the, this is the article on the fall town meeting warrant uh, regarding the multiple liquor licenses. So just an update from the select board meeting. Um, in, in respect to the warrant itself, the select board did not support um, the article in the way it was written, but the petitioner agreed that he would, um, he's interested in um, pushing or, or having somebody um, push an amendment on the floor of the meeting. So I said from the select board perspective that I would, I would help with modifying that. And it's really just a small portion. Um, we agreed it was to modify the blue star, the specific blue star reference to reflect what we had decided a few months back um, that it would be from, the district would be from um, 495 to the Eastern line on 123. And hey, Paul, I don't, I was thinking about this this morning. I don't know that we've ever done this, but is there a reason and maybe not to specifically mention that it would be like in an appropriate zoned area or do we just leave it as is because we've identified that zone and they would just have to find a commercial or an industrial property? I mean, the, 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 uh, underlying zoning would still determine where that okay. use can go. So I, I, I mean, I, I guess you could add it. Well, it might just probably not be necessary to say it can only be allowed in commercial or industrial use zoning because it, this wouldn't, the way that language is written, as I saw it, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything to, to mm -hmm. uh, conflict with, or say that it, it would, conflict with um, the base zoning. Yeah, that's okay. I was thinking the same thing, but I didn't know. I mean, I don't, I haven't ever been involved in a, a liquor license one. Um, so I think, I think it should be fine. I mean, we can always have town council look at it, but if we don't need it in there, then my, my thought is not to include it, right? Just focus on what's actually needed. Um, thank you. So anyway, um, any questions on that? Perfect, half the meeting's done. Um, Paul, I don't know if you have, I did send this to Mike or I thought I sent it to Mike. I don't know if you have any updates on the town owned properties or if we're still in a holding pattern just for the transition. Oh, I, I was out last week. I, I, I didn't ask Mike about that to uh, see what the current status is, but I will make a note to reach out to him tomorrow. Okay. It's been, um, I mean, it's only been a couple months, right? So she may need more time just to get up to speed on things. Okay, um, why don't we, Paul, go into your updates? Um, and I have business guide under that too. I think I just put it there as a placeholder, not necessarily that you'd have an update. I know you mentioned Dedham the last time, but if you wanna provide us with any, any updates that you think are relevant for the commission. Okay, um, just a, f a few things. Uh, I don't have an update on the the business uh, on the business guide. Uh, when I two weeks ago I mentioned we'd like to apply for that the uh, ARPA funding to get a consultant to to help us just put that together. And um, I just I, I I haven't. We still have time on submitting the ARPA funding, and I'm waiting um, to get our final plan for West Main Street and just give Mike a proposal that incorporates the plan from the from West Main Street and include this as part of it. Um, well, Monday's a big day. Um, we got the master plan in our town meeting and the master plan is one of the items going. Uh, we're excited about getting it there. Uh, uh, we have a, a brief handout uh, that the planning board wanted to just give a one pager. So uh, once that's done, um, you know, then it's it's then it's showtime, right, for us to get going on um, a lot of the activities. And you know, this this commission is going to be actively. In, you already are. I mean, you're already working on some of the things. So, but now we can do it through the lens of that of the master plan. 
Um, the local rapid recovery plan, uh, we saw the first draft uh, there. Uh, we were just awaiting some minor changes on the second draft. Um, and again, that's something that we'll work on with you. Uh, you, know, I, you know, again, that's gonna focus on a number of activities from short-term things to the long-term. It'll include things like marketing, business training, um, uh, capital improvement pro uh, projects that, that would be needed for that area. Uh, so I expect I'll get that final draft this week and then we'll basically have it on the heels of hopefully an adoption of the master plan. Uh, so uh, kind of cruising right along. Laura, thank you for getting that in the uh, that video out. I just looked at Facebook and we have over a thousand views or uh, on the, the video we did for Bog Iron. In fact, this afternoon we did a video, we did a business profile of Bridget's. So we had a good conversation with Bridget Daly. Um, uh, so that should be coming out early next week. Um, we have uh, uh, the residences at Great Woods requested a video. So we'll be doing that a week from Friday. And I just saw uh, there's a company I don't know how they heard about how they saw it, but a company called BeFit Norton uh, would like to do a video profile too. I just got the email at seven o'clock. So that was the post that that's why I gave you a heads up today because I put your email address and your yep. name on the post that I forwarded and said, if you've got a business that, um, you know, you'd like to get some more exposure and do a be featured in a profile, contact Paul. I right, thank you. Well, I'm gonna sure. I'll email him uh, as soon as we're done here and get that set. So we'll get a few of these in motion. Be right. fit is where 1440 was. Ah, okay, okay. And then uh, we're also just applying the the hashtag Norton for Biz um, on, you know, our we finally re, we relaunched our Facebook page. Uh, 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 so we're we're we've been down for since May, but we're back up and running. So we will use the hashtag there. Um, I use it on LinkedIn. Uh, I, I saw some of you, Cody. I saw you had put some things up on Facebook. Um, Laura, I think you did. So we're starting to use it. On the so how's uh, how's it trending? If you search on it, it was probably pretty quiet up until today. So today I went through and every single business that we were following, if it was an appropriate post, some of them weren't necessarily. I liked the last post and I put the hashtag in as a comment. Um, that gained us quite a few followers today. Um, and then I found another probably 50 businesses to follow um, from the EDC page. And again, liked a post or more recent post um, and put the hashtag in there so that people got used to it. Even a couple of people had come back and said, uh, I think it was Fork and Dib said, you know, I keep forgetting to use it. And just, just a gentle reminder. So hopefully we see some more activity starting. Luckily the Thompsons go there and always put it in. Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, they're in the common tomorrow too, I think I'll uh, plan to go. I always forget about it. Like in the middle of the day, I'm gonna see what, if I can do it tomorrow. <laughs> What time are they usually there? I think they get there at 11, usually. I'm sorry, Laura, what, what was that? No, sorry, I was just going to say Dave Lennon is very good um, about putting them in his posts, so. How, how late are they there till? Like two-ish? Like two or three. I might be able to make it tomorrow. It's on their, I think it's on their post, the one that I had tagged Norton for Biz. So that was um, all I had. Um, I, sh I should mention too, the videographer mentioned when he was out there at Bridget's that the um, Rich, who owns the carpet store, the name's for, I'm slipping my mind right now, 
was also interested in a video profile. So I'll be reaching out to him tomorrow. It's Carpet Barn. Carpet Barn, thank you. Where's that? It's right behind Bridget's. Bridget's. It's right behind Bridget's. Oh, oh, right. That building. Yeah. There's about four built four businesses that it's an L-shaped building. Now it's RW Carpet. Thanks, Peter. Awesome. Well, that's great. I know Mike had mentioned too um, that he was going to see about putting it up on that electronic board. Have you heard any updates on that, Paul, or anyone who passed it? Mm -hmm. The hashtag? Uh, yeah, he did mention it. Um, let me make a note of that. Um, and we can get Charlene to put that. Maybe it's been up there. I honestly I have to say I don't often look at that. I, I don't. Seen it. I don't drive down that way just because of where I live. So I. I haven't seen it. It's it's between between uh, what one twenty three and Bay, right? Yeah. So every time we go, my allergy shots are over there, and BJ's is over there. <laughs> you actually I, hop on the highway to get there. Wait, I'm sorry. Are you asking it, it for on the, the our, big the big on board? The, oh, well, the ours too. Board. Yeah, ours ours too. Okay. Um, but yeah, he okay. said he was going to reach out to Joe too about putting it on the school board. Well, it'd really, be good if we can get it on that giant billboard. That was the one. It'd be, I it'd it be nice talking. if we could put it on the schools before the town meeting, right? because everybody's going to head to the high school and that board's right there. But yeah, the other one would be great and catch all that traffic. I don't know, are both are both sides working now? Anyone else knows that they are? Yeah. Yeah, you can get weed in Plainville, in case you're wondering. Also, Geico can save you 15% on car insurance. Oh, excellent. Oh, you're funny. I do think it's funny that you get on the highway to go, but... It's, it's good. It only takes me 10 minutes to get there. Not bad. Awesome. Anything else, Paul? No, I think that's it. Cool. Well, thanks for the updates. Are you going to hang on for a little bit? Yeah, if you want me to. Yeah, I'd, I'd like you to hang on until Sandy gets here so we can talk about um, the Queensbridge comments okay. that we wanted to do because I think you saw those presentations. And if you had anything to add, if you don't mind, she said she was just going to be like a half hour late. So we can, huh. we can hop to, hop to that as soon as she gets on. Um, thank you so much. Um, so from, we might not even have much more to be honest. Um, under business updates, we have uh, first new business. I don't have any updates on this. I don't know if anybody else does. No. Did I ever mention, um, cause I really don't remember that um, exit 10 LLC identified a new location and, and got the approval from the board for an adjusted amendment. I think so. I knew it because I watched the select board meeting, but I don't remember if it was, we talked about it here. Yeah, I don't remember either. So I was just thinking because new business, um, if you remember, Andre had said for Solar Retail Norton that they are targeting still the end of the year. Um, I figured I'd catch up with them early November to see if that timeline has changed. And then I was just thinking of exit 10. So his, his, um, his timeline too, I know he's, he's scheduling the community outreach. And I think I actually have to send an email on that. Um, but uh, Alex is scheduling the community outreach to review, you know, it's the, the required meeting that they have um, from the CCC. So to review the location and, and their plan. So that should be coming up. I'll let you guys know. I haven't seen the date. But I also haven't looked at my um, town email in the last couple of days. Um, so I'll let you know if I see that just to share it with everybody. But um, his location is down by, it's on 123 near Taunton. Yeah, help me it's out. Old colony. It's Old Colony, right? Yeah, yeah. it is Old Colony. It's where Fisherman's, getting... Fisherman's it... used to be there. Yep, there was Fisherman's and next door was a liquor store. It's, yeah, and now there's like a doggy salon or yeah. something. It's in a different yeah. building than that. 
particular one. It's not the Fisherman's Three building. It's not that building. No, it's he was not. looking at that. Mm, hang on, I'll get. I think it's, I took a picture. It's a whole. It's a whole parcel, and I think there are two buildings there. Yeah. Hang on. I think I took a. It's like a like three addresses the... or something. I'm I'm getting it confused with the one he looked across the street that when they got in there for the inspection didn't pan out. All right, I got a screen cap of the thing if you want me to share. Yeah, please. Oh, I probably have to change my settings a little. All right. Okay, go ahead, Laura. Sorry about that. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so it's the that 409 and then the building on the right. So it's gonna be in here. And I actually have another one with the rendering of it. So I think these two mm. buildings that are X to come out the mm -hmm. egress is going to be expanded and then this building stays and if you give me one second i'm going to stop sharing that and i will share the one with the rendering and while you do that um it's a, it's from a, a traffic perspective it's it's a nice a nice area there's a deck of donuts you know right across the street from there or near it um so that helped them when they were looking to make sure that you know it would be a sustainable business so there's a, a good flow of traffic there. Yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to Alex tomorrow and start, try to set up a time to get him in to talk with staff about this. Mm -hmm. just, we, just so we can all get ahead of it before he submits his mm -hmm. site plan. Yeah. Permit. No, I think that would be great. And he, I think the only one that he said, uh, I think he only talked to Nick and uh, Chief Clark thus far, right? Because the chief reviewed... Um, the chief reviewed that he gave him some comments on the traffic flow. And then I think Nick, Nick had commented about it's great, you know, that we'll have a, a facelift on an older property. Yeah. Okay. So, nice screenshot. You couldn't have just grabbed like the <laughs> I was doing it quick. picture. Just doing it quick. Um, so the only thing I was unclear as to, you know, they, he started talking about these, the folks that are in the uh, far end potentially staying, and then it sounds like they weren't staying, and it, it was all a little muddled. From but from my understanding, it like it's I don't think any decisions have been made. Right, they're they're um, they're month to month tenants, so nobody has yep. committed to long term. So I I think that that might shake itself out once ownership is transitioned, and he can actually talk to them about it. That, that was more for my conversations with him, not from the select board meeting. Um, but it's good. I mean, at least the step is done. Um, you know, that I know, I believe, I know that he had enough signatures for the HCA. Um, so I think it was executed for the amendment. And then, um, like I said, he's planning the meeting. So I'll, I'm going to write myself a note to check to see if I have an email from him. Okay. When you get the date for the community outreach meeting let me know and i'll post it on the um facebook page awesome thank you and i do know he's planning on doing it virtual because that's what i have to send an email on just to give them approval that they can still do that okay. i think that'll that'll reach a wider audience and we'll plan the same thing um i'll make sure that he posts it or provides it to norton media center too to get posted like uh elicited with lucky green ladies Okay, um, that was all I had for those. Um, next on the agenda is the Queen's, Queens Bridge, but we'll um, we'll table that until Sandy comes. Anything, any updates on the business database? I do. Uh, it is seven eighths complete. Um, everybody who committed, well, almost everybody who committed to getting it to me today uh, succeeded and I will need to reach out to, um, <laughs> I'll need to reach out to Mr. Tool to find out uh, if he is close or if he needs some help. He did tell okay. me he was going to have it done, but I haven't seen it yet. But it's not done. He's got another, you know, four hours if he wants to to get it in. He's not late yet. <laughs> 
Send them a text right now as a reminder. Say, yeah. hey, we were just talking in the meeting. Maybe it'll be a, a dual reminder. Does he have an excused absence tonight? I mean, he didn't hand me a, a slip or anything from the doctor, but <laughs> I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't heard from him. Okay. I didn't know if he had reached out and said he wasn't going to make it. No. No, he did not. I just All heard right. from Sandy and Sharon. All right. I'll give him shit. Oops. Crap. La la la. It'll be you. Awesome. Um, and then the other item on there was the partnership with the existing businesses that we, I think we're going to talk about uh, kind of in tandem with the business database. I don't know if it's, if it's worth throwing around some ideas now while we wait for Sandy. Certainly uh, keep it open. What was the, can you give a little well, more explanation? What are we, like ideas to expand business or help businesses that are? Just, just partnering with them. So I think some of the original conversation was, you know, meeting with some of the owners, talking about, um, you know, how we can support them. Um, I think part of that too was to, to see if they wanted to do like the video um, profiles. I think we mentioned that. I don't know if we want to like put a structure together maybe of, of certain things that we could do. Um, the, the point, Cody, if I remember, and please you guys keep me honest, was once we had the business database and we had a really good, um, we had a really good uh, understanding of the businesses that were in town and then some contacts that we would, we would do like a, um, just to reach out to them. Um, we also talked about doing, like inviting them to a meeting, like either coming to a meeting with us or maybe we like host something where they would come and just kind of talk about their businesses and more of an open discussion of, you know, what are, what are some challenges or, or what are areas that we can help? And I know Paul had mentioned at the time, right, Paul, we were talking, it was more COVID related about, you know, there are programs that are out there that, um, that can help and, and your, your office is a good contact or conduit to do that. So I, I think that that was about the, the gist of the conversation, but um, we tabled it just to get the business database done. Um, can I throw out a suggestion of like, finding ways to network the existing like organizations. We were talking just amongst friends at the bus stop about how great it would be if uh, Sweet Stuff partnered with Norton Youth Soccer and like supplied stuff for the uh, concession stand since she's not open during the soccer games on Saturdays. Which would really? also be awesome. Yeah, she didn't open until like 10 or something like that. Um, but if she doesn't want to be open, then, you know, still partnering because there's <clears throat> all the kids love all the stuff. Hell, we love all the stuff. So if they could, I mean, it, it's like dual purpose. She could sell, yeah. it, sell it to Norton Youth for the, for the concession stand at you know, maybe a discounted price and they can sell it at the, at her retail price and the partnership there. And that's not just for her, but any other, you know, any other local spots that want to do something like that. I don't. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a great idea. Are there concession stands at our football games? To expand that, like I'm thinking throughout, like what could be opportunities throughout the year, right? Soccer runs a couple months in the fall and then a couple months right in the spring. Also, first and 10 has a booster and they run a concession stand during the games and they get a lot of people there buying food and maybe the big kids could try to sell the football games, right? Yeah, or we, if we could, I mean, we could do like an alternating, you know, cycle through um local shops that want to provide you know stuff for the uh for the concession stand you know a local pizza place can provide pies you know stuff like that and just cycle it through and then they can have their put their banner up you know next to the all the concession stands stuff like that let me ask a stupid question is is there any sort of licensing that would have to go along with that Paul, would you happen to know? Uh, that that I don't know. 
for licensing. Can we just say no? <laughs> Let's not stifle business. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, I'm just thinking logistics. Like, they sell it to Norton Youth Soccer, and then Norton Youth Soccer sells it, right? Like, I don't, I don't know how those things work. Or, or do they sell it, and then anything, any goods sold from a company, right? They give them the money. I just don't where's, know how. Where's Norton Youth Soccer? I mean, they make uh, breakfast. Um, breakfast sandwiches. sandwiches, hot dogs, hamburgers, like they've got all that stuff and all the concession stand stuff. I'm assuming that Norton Youth Soccer goes and buys all of that. So I don't see why there would be any reason they couldn't buy it from a local, a local, uh, you know, retailer or, mm -hmm. or restaurant, as long as it's prepackaged and it's, you know, meeting all the health codes, which, I mean, all that stuff is prepackaged whenever you're buying it from the shop. She's got her, you know, cupcake tins and stuff like that. Yeah. Have you talked to, are you on the, on the board of Norton Youth Soccer? No. Do you have access to them to bring it up? Yeah. I live next to Dusty. I can ask him. I think he's on it. Dusty that wasn't Moore. the access I was thinking of, but that works. <laughs> I can ask him. He wasn't at the bus stop when we were talking about that. So. Gotcha. Yeah. No, I think it's a great idea. Go ahead, Chris. I had a couple of thoughts, Renee. I mean, I think, first of all, uh, it's great to have the database almost together 100%. A um, couple of things. First of all, I think it's a good idea that you mentioned to be able to have just a one pager of what are some of the things that the Economic Development Commission can bring to the table with businesses. I think it's good to have a talking points, a common sheet uh, that every, everybody's saying the th same things to the businesses so there's no you know nothing nothing being offered beyond what the scope of the edc can can offer to to help and partner with businesses i think the second thing is to be able to identify a group of businesses that you know strategically fit into what the edc is trying to accomplish uh and the edc's overall goals so i think that that's something that you know the group could individually look at the at the list of businesses and then kind of integrate their ideas at a meeting and, and come up with a list of the top 10 of the top 20 businesses that you'd like to approach to see if you could try to partner together um, locally in town. Um, and then I guess the, the final piece would be is that, you know, Paul certainly has started to get some traction with businesses that want to do videos and really want to, you know, be part be a partner with the with the planning organization as well as the EDC. So that that might be a great place to start is to be able to start having discussions so that you can st understand what the framework of these discussions would look like, and then be able to go ahead and to start to say, okay, hey, here's here's a list of things that we've done with the diff different businesses, and this is how we've helped them. So as you try to take that model and sell that back against other businesses as you approach them rather than them approaching you. Um, you, you, you. You've got all your ducks in a row, so you're having very efficient and effective conversations with businesses and in, in, in trying to accomplish your goals. So that, that was my thought kind of in a broad broad base uh, relative to your, uh, your question. No, I think it's good. I think that brings up a good point too, like that we're all seeing the same story. So even you know, additionally, when I think of the business profiles, right, like Paul, like getting a, a two or three page summary of what is that, how long are they typically, and, you know, we could obviously give your contact information, but it would help them to just kind of, um, just kind of preface what opportunities are there and, and be consistent in the approach. So I, I do like that, because I was thinking, how would I like explain the business profiles and I think maybe even, you know, obviously it, it increases the visibility, but we can also branch off and see when these things are posted, like the, you know, the EDC refers to them. We put them on all the local um, social media pages, talk about the hashtag. I know we talked about, Mike was going to get, I think some, or maybe Paul, you, you had the takeaway to get some stickers made that we could hand out the businesses to with the hashtag so that they could put it in their, in their stores. I think that was, I think Mike was, was Mike? speaking to that. Okay. Renee, that, that point uh, about having a consistent message out there, I think is, is so critical and can't be overstressed. I mean, I, I just coming off my 28 separate butter meetings 
you know, I was the only one talking to the abutters. So, you know, I had my talking points and I stayed right on the talking points. So if, you know, abutters talk to other abutters about the rail trail, I was saying the same thing to everybody. So it's not, not as if, you know, there's any variance. And, and I think, that, you know, obviously these are less crucial communications with businesses. And, but the key is not to be making commitments or at least have somebody say, well, you said such and such. Um, right. Having it talking points, I think, really uh, is going to be critical to make sure that the businesses feel that they're, they're all being treated on an, on an equal mm -hmm. basis. It would be nice too to hear from them like over time about you know what 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 things do they they see that we could potentially help with that we're not doing now right to kind of focus like what are some future goals for us or objectives like that would be good too to kind of you know as from a consistency perspective to to reach out not to just say hey here's you know some things that are happening but how can how, how can we help you yeah i mean i could tell you my discussion with um with um uh, Steve Nassif relative to his uh, interest in the, in the property at Roach Brothers. You, you know, I mean, I know I was kind of flying blind there. So, you know, before I had my conversation with him, you know, I made sure I spoke with Paul, I spoke with Mike, I got, you know, I, I got an idea of, you know, some of the things that can be discussed um, and then made sure that I stayed within myself, within, you know, what they, uh, the guidance they gave me to make sure that I didn't make any representations that later could could turn out to be unfortunate so so you you know it, it's it, there has to be a certain degree of care so we okay great but also the question becomes is that you know what what is the bandwidth of the edc what strategically what are you trying to accomplish and then who are the who are the businesses that are going to help you accomplish it the highest priority business i mean you could you know you can't go out to 7,000 different businesses, right? Uh, um, but so if you've got a sole proprietorship, you know, um, is that something that you have time to be able to, to spend? Or do you really focus your efforts um, on canvassing the larger employers or larger prospective employers into the community? Is that how you, you allocate your resources and time? And the resources and time are really you know, Paul's time, the committee's time here, the, that's, that, that's really what, what you've got to offer is your time. And, um, and so that's the process that you go through to be able to go ahead and to qualify your leads and make sure that you're really being as effective as you can with the, with the interactions you're having with select uh, businesses. Yeah, I agree. And, and this is my... thinking about those who signed up for the, the pub crawl. Well, and, and this, Renee, goes back to a conversation we had a few months ago about having members of different sectors speak to you all about issues. You know, maybe one night it's, it's supply chain, another night it's restaurants, mm -hmm. you know, have them, you know, this could be a great forum for them to just be able to just speak freely about what the town can do. Um, you know, what, you know, are there regulatory changes we can make? Are there ways, <clears throat> excuse me, that we should use ARPA funding to help small businesses? You know, that's, those could be crucial for us. Hey, Paul, how many different like funding sources or grant sources are available for small businesses? And, and what, how is a small business defined? Is it like less than 50 employees or is it? it it'll depend on the grant. They will specify. Uh, there's a lot with, with the stimulus money that's out right now. I there's at least between five and ten grants from the feds that are out there. The state has additional funding sources as well. Right now, everyone's focusing on the the uh, primarily the ARPA funding, but it there's a few other things in there. So I, I forget the amount that this that Norton is getting for ARPA. It's a few million. But yeah, it's, it was pretty substantial, I thought. Yeah, so we have to determine, you know, you can use it for uh, infrastructure, but we can also use, we can use it for affordable housing. You can use it for helping small businesses and there's public health. Uh, so I've been focusing on those things that can, you know, help small businesses out. 
Um, but right now, I mean, we, we have some time to, to submit those projects, but um, fortunately with our, at least the two plans coming together, that'll give us um, guide, guidance for how we would use it for economic development. And maybe there are some other, you know, I'm not looking at public health, but well, public health really isn't covered in either plan, but housing is. Uh, so anyway, there's a few, it, but all, it really depends on the grant, how they define small businesses. Uh, I've seen a lot that are under 10, emplo 10 employees or less, and some could be higher. And any chance we know um, from the business information that was reviewed, how many employees are um, with each of these companies? Like, is that, was that information part of because Chris did my work, I have absolutely no idea. No. No, and there's no way to, there's no public way to know that. There's some websites that claim to know or like estimate the number of employees, but I don't think there's any public way to, to get that information. D&D would be the only source and it would have to be a fairly large company for it to hit yeah. D&D. I think the census tells us the great majority of our businesses are small. We, we just don't have many large employers in town, a handful, but many of them are like, we know looking at West Main Street, I mean, the majority, the great majority of them are, you know, they're probably, you know, under 20 employees. Yeah, I, but, I think it'd be nice and whatever we put together, like we probably need to have that breakdown, right? Of like, if ARP is only for, less than 10 employees. I mean, we don't want to, we don't want to say, Hey, this is available to you and then realize they have 15 employees and it's not right. So, so we kind of stagger it a little bit. Paul, how, how many different sites are there where like we'd be able to compile this information somewhat easily? For, for what, what just, sort of information? Just for understanding the funding availability, oh. whether it's grants or something else, like you mentioned the feds have like five to 10 and then the state has some, but the states are probably, yeah a little easier to find versus the Fed? Or do you think they right. each have a website where we can look and then we can do a quick review to say, you know, or just put them in categories? Well, we would need to make sure that when we have, when we're applying the grant funding, we need to put the eligibility criteria in. Uh, that would be the, the critical aspect, I think, rather than us trying to figure that target out. I think we would just need to say, if, if you're, if 10 employees or less, you're eligible for this. That's one of yeah, the criteria. Right. And they may not even be that strict. I mean, the, the ARPA might be much greater than that. Uh, I don't even know that they, I'm not sure that they even did. I mean, I've, there's a lot of resources out there and I have to look back at some of the ones I've, that I've seen. Uh, I don't remember seeing anything that was that strict to say five or fewer. There are some grants that are that way, but the big, ARPA funding, we'd have to look, but I think we have flexibility, but we'll need to make sure we, we are putting eligibility criteria in. Is um, that, are, are those, whenever you come up with those and you find those resources, are, is there a place that it's being shared like LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter or any, anywhere else? We, where we, like we get emails from different organizations. Uh, I'm not I'm not active on Facebook, so it's probably there. LinkedIn's probably, but you know, we'll get it from different, we'll get emails from different state organizations who are trying to help help municipalities get it. Um, I, I mean, there's always a ton of money that the government is willing to give out. And I feel like small businesses in particular aren't really aware of it. Yeah unless somebody tells them about it. And if, if we have a, if we have the means to like publish it somewhere, like anywhere and, and share it so that they, you know, are aware that there's this money out there that they could potentially, everybody was kind of aware whenever the, when COVID first started and all the um, yeah. stimulus packages that were passed, I mean, that all made national news, but nobody's said, well, there's still a ton of that money left over and here's who qualifies for it or here are the five other ways that you can also get money. 
if there was a, yeah. a way like you know i don't know if on the on the planning side or on the edc side or you know somewhere where whenever we come up with that stuff if we can now as simple as just like sharing whatever the link is and throwing on hashtag Norton for biz, like anybody that then is looking at that and it's, you know, promoting that same thing. Like you're, you're aggregating all the resources for these, for the local businesses to, you know, not just broadcast, but also receive information. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. I'm going to look back um, tomorrow or Friday and see, um, I've been focusing on what's coming to the towns, but I need to look back and see, was there anything, are there funds available directly to, there are. Um, I have to look back at it because we also get, uh, I get emails from, from business uh, organizations that help bus businesses like Small Business Development Center, uh, groups like that. But I'll look into that and we can start posting things up if, if there are uh, funding sources for, for businesses to directly apply to, say, the uh, Small Business Administration. You know, we can put that out there and share that. So I, I made a note on my calendar for tomorrow to take a look at that. Yeah, I mean, my, a great point. yeah, one of the one of the things that I've just been thinking about is, you know, obviously we're we've been focusing recently on, you know, growing the number of businesses, trying to bring in new business, but part of the development is also, you know, promoting the existing, which the hashtag Norton for Biz is good for. Um, is there, a, apart from Founders Day, which I know got canceled last year, is that, that that's not going forward again this year? I mean, what's the, do we know? I guess that's already passed actually. Right. Um, that's the summertime. More yeah. So that's uh, Halloween's happening. The Halloween parade's happening, but um, yeah, founders. Oh, how year. do we get the hashtag in our Halloween parade? We got local sign companies. We do. I'm, I'm going to have a little uh, wagon behind me. I can always put something I will be in the Halloween parade. Um, I've got a, I've got a buddy that runs a sporting goods store that has access to screen printing if we want to like, get some t-shirts made up. Well, I'm, I'm going to have a costume on, so I can't, I can't do a t-shirt. And Renee, and I was just thinking of, this is our last meeting before Halloween. This should have been a costume meeting. That's a pity. Well, well Cody's got the Astros hat, so he's got us. I, I got, I got ALCS champs. <laughs> uh oh, Mike. And Renee, that Parks and Rec put some lights on festivities, and hopefully it'll be this year. I hope so, Peter. Yep. Is, I mean, uh, other than Founders Day, do we, is there, I mean, the, this is the first time I'm, I'm aware, I, obviously I know that the, the Halloween parade is happening this year, um, but are there other things where there's opportunities for not just businesses to get get out there and, and sell stuff and get their name out, but also like networking where we could get those, like if you have the SBA or other like local organizations like that for small businesses where we can get them together on a Founders Day kind of deal where, you know, you bring in a lot of the, the small businesses to, um, and you can bring in outside people, not just, you know, Norton Knights. Um, if we did something like that, it, it, it you know, it snowballs, you know, if it becomes an annual thing. Uh, and Founders Day was the only thing that I'm aware of that, you know, usually happens every year. Yep, that's right. And hopefully Founders Day will be in June 2022, right? No, I, I remember there was some discussion on doing like a food truck type thing, right. like so kind of like a Norton Fair, but um, I think that was like with Norton the former... Did the uh, family day. I, was say, I thought Sharon yeah. was working on something with the food trucks. Yeah, I thought she was too, but wasn't that part of her Parks and Rec role? It was, yeah. When, right before COVID last year, she and I, or she had asked me to go with her to the Mansfield one and do some reconnaissance um, and talk to some people about bringing it. Yeah, reconnaissance. <laughs> Otherwise known as eating. Um, <laughs> and get some intel. 
for potentially bringing something like that here. And then I'm not even sure. I think that one went through. I think they still held that one. Um, and then COVID. You know. Maybe we'll, that's, I'll, that's I'll shoot Sharon a note just to see if maybe that's something that she transitioned and maybe we can look for something like that, Cody, and, and we can support in that in the spring. Yeah, I mean, and it didn't even occur to me to partner with like the Parks and Rec. Um, obviously, there's there's lots of uh, town property that we should be able to hold things on, um, parks and, and whatnot. So if we can if we can find a way to, to partner and, and make it a deal, like draw, draw crowds, draw outside people, give opportunities for small businesses to network. Um, Cork and Bib does a good job networking with like Bog Iron and, and other, you know, the food truck kind of world is really good about that, um, sourcing local and partnering with, with other, um, you know, popular businesses. But uh, apart from that, I don't, I don't see it a, a heck of a lot. And if we just, we give the, we give more opportunities to develop new business while supporting the existing business. Obviously, anybody that's, you know, if, if your name is out there and Norton is, is trending, people are coming in um, for events and they see, you know, that it, it becomes more of a destination. We got, we got enough stuff around us that people are aware. You got Xfinity there, you got the rodeo, you got, you know, all sorts of stuff. So Tritown Chamber of Commerce does, um does have some events that are kind of, I think, similar to what you're, you're talking about, Cody, um, those networking um, events for the region. So I don't know if maybe rather than reinventing the wheel, we, we tap into something that they're already doing or extend something they're doing, um, kind of work with them. Yeah, it, and just getting the word out. I mean, obviously, you know, small businesses have to be a little bit, um, responsible for their own marketing but if you're talking about mom and pop you know two three people they don't have a marketing department to figure out how to get their word out some of them are probably not active on social media and you know if they if your world's like this you got to find a way to get them out there so that you open up those potential contacts that they're missing out on So who, who wants to, um, I, I can follow up with Sharon unless somebody else wants to do that and then just see what the status was and if if she transitioned it. Does anyone want to take a peek on the um, Tritown Chamber of Commerce to see if they have any events that are there and, or contact people that we could talk to? I know Michael has some contacts there, so he probably would be the best to let us know what they do. He follows more with what they're doing than I think. I Are you do. volunteering him? Um, yeah, I mean, I can touch base with him and see what, what he, I'll pull it out of him. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I think they're all good ideas. Okay, um, great. So I think, um, Paul, there are some, some pieces of information that we'll need from you and then we could just start to put something together, right, to, to create like a, um, a script for us to use to go out to folks. And then once we have an idea of the business database, we can go through and kind of prioritize or, or, you know, maybe pick the first 20 that, that we'd want to reach out to. And Paul, if there's anyone who, who's like contacted your office in the past, maybe for things that, you know, didn't typically fall under you and, or that you could assist, like that might be something that EDC can do. You know, especially in conversation, I think if we explain to them what we do, like town volunteers, I think it's a more laid back informal conversation. So, and then maybe we do a roadshow. Maybe our next meeting, we actually meet at a local establishment. Kind of test the water, not test the waters, but, you know, get some thoughts together. So I, I apologize, I missed the first part of the call, but, but Laura, did you get all the spreadsheet filled out? Uh, Are they still I'm missing? Wait, I'm waiting for one person to get back to me. Okay. And then do we know where we want to, I guess, if we're doing a roadshow, it has to be food establishments. <laughs> well, yes, when we meet at seven o'clock at night. 
right. No, I don't. I don't know where. Does anyone have any ideas? Place big enough, maybe. Home plate. Too too loud, or has a section where we can kind of carve off. Home plate. Home plate. Okay. Are we having it taped? Like, do we no. need AD? No. No. Pre-COVID, we didn't tape anything. Remember, we shoved ourselves into the kitchen of town hall. We just need to take notes, post notes, okay. meeting minutes, and, and post an agenda. So if somebody wants to join us, they have access to join us. And we could always see about Mac and Wald's, especially if it's in the next couple of weeks, it still could be warm enough to be outside even. You're, you're so positive, Paul. <laughs> I, I, outside love, this I love morning. cool weather anyway, so. Paul, how long does the um, how long does the outdoor dining go for without somebody filing for like a permanent license or whatever they need for that? I thought it, I thought it was through the season, uh, but we have to look at that because the state is now offering up incentives to now make it year round. So that's one of the things we need to do uh, going forward. Is I need to work with you know, the building commissioner, uh, board of health too, to see how do we make changes so that it's the outdoor seating is, it, you know, maybe, maybe that you need to do an annual license for it, but um, you know, we should be incentivizing year round because we, we saw last year, people ate outside in the winter. So, um, you know, we'll need, we'll want to um, work on that we'll need to work on that and codify it. Okay. Yeah, I think that'd be good to know. I, I was one of those people who was going out late, but then it got to the point when time changed and uh, certain establishments weren't changing when they turned their heaters on. So you sat there for an hour in the dark freezing before they'd actually flip, flip on those, those tanks. <laughs> that was like the last of it. Yeah. Okay, so I have Mac and Wall tone plate. Any other suggestions? Because I'll, I'll shoot something out. We'll just do a quick poll before the meeting. Yeah, now that I think about it, I'm typically driving during the meeting. So Mac and Waltz is right next to me, but that's probably about the only one I can make it to. <laughs> Mac and Waltz? Yeah. You close to your drop off and pick up? Yeah, I'm right next door at the Art in Motion. <laughs> gotcha. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. We'd have to see the weather because I don't know that they're, well, we meet on Wednesdays. I can always call and see if they have space. Like they don't really have a carve out other than at the end of the bar or maybe uh, in one of the back corners. Just want to point out, Mike is pointing out about bog iron. Um, the one thing I've learned from, from Brian at bog iron is uh, Wednesday nights are very busy for them. I mean, we could certainly consider it unless, you know, food, you know, might be an issue for some and hearing Denise, but um, Wednesday seems to be, a, according to Brian, a pretty busy night for them. So um, that's just a consideration. Okay, thanks, Paul. That's, I, I think that we'd want to try to avoid that thing because it'll probably be loud and just hard for us to have discussion. Right, yeah. But That's why Mike. I think outside could be better because you won't get that echo. Yeah. Okay. And Any, anyone oppose <laughs> bog iron? We can, I, are the igloos big enough? I don't know. I've not been in one actually yet. <laughs> I've been either. Okay. I've seen you say in the chateau. So, so I'll, I'll shoot a note. Um, I should have known out to everyone. And then with a priority, I know Denise is, does anyone have any objections to Mac and Waltz if it were that one? Uh, I was gonna say, don't work it around me. It's not a big deal. I'm just no, saying. No, but I mean, we can, you know, we can go to different places and this could just be that one of the first ones if they're not, if they're not swamped or if they can accommodate us outdoors easily. Well, I'll have to disclose to Cody that the owner of, of Mac and Waltz is an OU fan. So I don't know if that bothers you or not. I, oh. I, got no, I got no skin in the college No skin in that game, okay. My college football team was dissolved, so I've got no team. Okay. Uh, he, he's a great guy. I just kid, kid him because he's an Oklahoma fan. 
and I have to support my wife, you know. Yeah, I thought your wife was from Texas. She is. She's UT. Uh, I'm usually anti-UT. I, I root against UT. <laughs> it's easy to do this year. Okay, I'm going to bring us back to the discussion. Okay, so I'll shoot a net out. We'll confirm and I'll make a phone call about potentially our, our next meeting. Um, being at Mac and Walter, another another establishment. Um, okay, so Denise, uh, Denise, I'm sorry, um, Sandy, we had we tabled the Queensbridge discussion until you joined, um, and I asked Paul to hang on too, so if he had any comments. But um, I apologize, guys, I forgot to bring this up at the last meeting, um, but just wanted to wanted to figure out, you know, where we were on how we wanted to present things to the select board if we were doing um, if we were just gonna look at the comments and then provide our comments to them um, or do any sort of votes and then um, finalize the information that Sandy has so we can we can move on with that. So Sandy, you wanna, you wanna first start, we'll just review the info that you have and then see if anybody has additional comments. And again, this is specifically for Queensbridge. Queensbridge, Queensbridge was um, cultivation, manufacturing and uh, transportation. Um, and they were at the, the South Washington property, zero South Washington, just as a reminder. Did anybody, Renee, get back to you with any more comments? No, I, I had not received any, but I did say I haven't looked at my email for the past couple of days. So if that somebody sent something before the meeting, I apologize, I didn't see it. I can, I can scan my email if uh, you want to bring up the document and we can talk about it. Did anybody specifically email me and not the others? on the call okay i know i had no additional comments other than what we had discussed during those meetings which i'm assuming is already in the report or whatever it's called so you want me to, to share my screen sure please Let me zoom in. Wow. <laughs> Hang on. What do I? How am I sharing? I forget now. Uh, down at the bottom. And then I think you have options for the window or your screen. Oh, there's your Yeah, I don't use um, Zoom anymore at work. So I come in and I have to take a moment to figure out what I'm doing. Seeing, is everybody seeing that? Yep. All right, so we're just looking at Queensbridge. Um, yeah, you can you can remove all the Oasis stuff if you want. Um, actually, that was the bottom was both also. So yeah, so I think a lot of some of the concerns were for both, but I tried to take all the comments that we um, we were discussing at that last meeting to put together. And I just, not sure if I captured it all. Do you want me to go through them line by line, Renee, or just? Um, yeah, if you wanted to, yeah, just do a quick high level on each section, the strengths, concerns. Okay. And then I guess the concerns for both, you could just move into the same, right? Or, or what well, we should review because it, I see it's the, the first cultivation applicant. You should probably review if it's still applicable. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. So I think the big experience, the big um, concern came back to experience in a lot of cases. Um, the senior management with their, the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the concerns was the experience, but then also they did have some experience in terms of, um, the Department of Corrections with, with their CSO the security. Um, we thought that that was a strength. Uh, their marketing oh. you know, marketing plan that was strong. 
Sandy, can I just ask on the first one, like what's what's the correlation of of being in the Department of Corrections with um, like physical access and transportation security of a regulated product? So now I'm trying to remember, but I know that Tiffany kind of went into a big um, explanation about how their backgrounds she felt were they, they had a connection over into securities, you know, just in general, they policies and procedures, security, they, they had that down so that it would transfer over to to their, their new business. Oh, maybe mistaken, but wasn't one of their, um, one of their employers or employees was a former warden for the Rhode Island Department of Corrections. I think that like warden for the prison, I, I think there was one of that. And then I, I do remember them saying specifically around the transportation piece, you know, um, securing prisoners for transport and the security around transportation, you know, transporting uh, prisoners would be similar to security measures taken to secure the, the material, the, um, the products. Hmm. Okay. I don't necessarily know that, you know, are they going to have razor wire around it and, you know, two fences and guards at the gate? I, I doubt it. I mean, the, the, the CCC is pretty specific on the security that has to be in place, right? Fencing cameras, um, internal and external um, protections as well. I, I'm not familiar and I haven't read their guidance around transportation. Um, so I can't comment on that, but I, I just ask because if you remember, I, I missed a couple of these meetings. So that's why I was, I was trying to understand what the correlation was. Yeah, like I guess I don't remember all the details, but I know that was one of their big, um, one of the things they, they kept selling themselves on in terms of their strengths and their experience. Okay. Um, I, and I, would, I would say of anything that they, you know, of all the different areas that, that again, that was, if you look at all the different areas of, um, that they'll have to be sort of experts in, that was, that was the one that, that we felt that was the strongest. Okay. Laura, did you have a comment? I was just going to say, you know, I would, I, I would agree it's a transferable skill. Hmm. Okay. At least with regards to the transportation aspect of it, not necessarily the cultivation. Yeah, I actually thought that was different because transportation as aspect, I mean, when you're transporting prisoners, it's, it's the internal threat versus I think more of the external threat or, um, you know the threat of of an inside job type thing so I, I i'm not sure that i'm on board with that but again i wasn't involved in discussion so that's that's I an area I won't, are, I won't comment in officially yeah I, I think there are protocols in place that are required by the state that would probably be very similar to some of the protocols that are required within a prison system mm -hmm. have you read the protocols for transportation from the state by chance, just, the anyone just, seen them? just the delivery operator. Yeah, I'm assuming the transportation is very similar, if not even more stringent. Yeah, I really don't know, to be honest. So it's a, I'm going to have to Google that. Look at from this to uh, see what's on there. From the, the town perspective, I mean, I, I personally would be less concerned about how they secure their product and whether it gets stolen or, you know, I, I guess inviting crime in would be a concern, but, you know, they're going to have a certain deterrence and I'm less concerned about them, you know, getting jacked for a, a load of, so of product than I am around how they're operating in the town and whether or not it's impacting the immediate neighbors and abutters. And the town in general that that's that would be my big concern and, and obviously you know the concerns that are listed in there all, all the ones that i was concerned about are in there and probably the biggest piece there is whether or not they're going to be capable of maintaining the odor mitigation because that's going to be the biggest gripe from anyone in the town it, this isn't going to be a, a high traffic kind of operation i don't think um 
from the sounds of it. So my biggest concern, I guess, is, you know, people getting upset about the odor. Okay, sorry, Sandy. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so the marketing plan, they had a strong marketing plan. They definitely have experience in marketing. Um, they hired a botanist with a high level experience. The, they did have the odor mitigation plan from Quest Climate, which was used, is used by, they, they pointed to two uh, Care Leaf and Cresco labs. And then they, again, alluded to the experience with legacy market. Didn't get into the specifics on that, but said they do have um, experience in there. Any other additional things to put in there? A quick question. Um, where, like, where is this going? Sorry, I've missed the last 12 meetings. But what, what, what do you mean, Mike? Um, where, where is it going? I, I thought that we had put this to sort of the closure. I'm just trying to, I'm wondering where is this going to go from here? So this, uh, I don't know that we ever put this to closure. I mean, Queensbridge, the, the question that I started with, with the board was, are, are we are we voting to are we going to vote for recommendation or are we just sending in comments with no recommendation like we need to decide what how we're going to move it forward if we want it in front of the select board but essentially it'll go from us to select board um, for consideration or we vote against that and renee again sorry um because i missed the 12 last 12 meetings oh the the reason we're not talking about oasis of tranquility here why don't we pull them and we're only focus on queensbridge uh, I, we pulled them from the select board based on uh, some emails that were received that we felt didn't represent um, a partnership that we wanted to engage with. So they were informed during, um, during the process of reviewing the HCA that, that we were not going to seek a partnership with them. So at some point, Queensbridge and Oasis were coupled together, correct? Uh, that's a sticky, um, if you remember Oasis approached us first, Queensbridge was hired by them to consult. And then, I don't know, maybe the third meeting, they both presented separate plans. Yeah, the Oasis of Tranquility was using Queensbridge's executives as advisors for their business okay it, it was it, it was weird i'll give you that it was a very strange business plan yeah, but in the end they were two separate businesses um they didn't have i mean originally we thought they had crossover employees but they, they just, Queensbridge, if you looked at um, Oasis, their, their list, they kept, they, they, they kept putting um, advisor under everything. So mm -hmm. all the people that they listed were not actually employees, they were advisors. So okay. Oasis never really had any management in place. So I guess, can I just, again, sorry, I missed the last 12 meetings. <laughs> who, is, who is behind Queensbridge? Like what, what are the names again? Uh, Tiffany Isom. Okay. And um, oh, I always I can't remember if it's Brent or Brett Paquin. I have to look at my emails. Okay. I get it confused all the time. So and Tiffany Tiffany was the one um, who was essentially re representing Queensbridge too. So she was speaking on both. Okay. But um, Janice Israel was the owner of uh, Oasis of Tranquility. Does that help to remember who was presenting what? Yeah, it definitely does. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions on the strengths? So then um, big concerns were again, lack of experience um, in the marijuana industry specifically, um, and then also in commercial cultivation, large scale manufacturing. So really in any, any kind of, um, you know, cultivation manufacturing in general, it wasn't even like they had uh, transferable skills and other 
So can I ask how we have that one on there? Like if we have a, a concern in commercial cultivation, but yet on strengths, we, we note that they hired a botanist who has the experience in growing marijuana? He had experience, but he didn't have commercial experience. And my concern is mainly with management, not necessarily growing. Where the lack of experience comes in. So there's yeah. lack of experience in the legal marijuana industry. And in general, there's lack of experience in really any managerial aspect. I don't think so, anybody within their executive suite had any sort of relevant managerial experience to that level. Okay, so is the last comment under strength, the legacy market attached to the third bullet to the botanist? Yes. Sandy, we lost your audio. You don't look like you're muted. Oh, now you're muted. But you didn't look like you were muted. That was weird. I don't know. I got this little weird message. Hang on. Let me share again. Um, yeah, the, the, it wasn't, it was in general. They, they said they had experience. I mean, yes, the botanist has experience in the legacy market, but I think they also, um, again, we didn't get a whole lot of detail, right? Because we just, one of the comments we made at one point was that they didn't have any experience in the legacy market. And they said that that wasn't true, but that they didn't really get into the details. Well, I would assume if you're, de if you're employed by a Department of Corrections, you wouldn't mm -hmm. get into detail. Right. Yeah, right, exactly. And that's kind of what they said, was mm -hmm. that they didn't want to, in a public meeting, get into the specifics. It, it, when we talk legacy, we're talking about before it was legal. Is right. that what we mean? Okay. So there's a significant difference between growing non-commercially and growing commercially. And... And I think that's what the points are making, Mike. That's that's what the that's exactly what this, the strengths and weaknesses right. say, right? They have experience in the legacy market, but they don't have anything experienced. And they have a grower who knows how to grow marijuana, um, but they don't have experience in anything large scale that would be required of a of um, of the scale they were talking about. I think, kind of to to boil this down to like the the base of of the concern is they may have experience in kind of residual markets, legacy markets, you know, they may have been dealing on the side or like, who knows what, what all that entails. The, for me, the, the base concern here is they clearly have never run a business before. No one in, in their uh, C-suite apart from uh, uh, the real estate mogul that's bankrolling them has run a business, certainly not in manufacturing, not in cultivation, and not anything to do with marijuana. And there is going to be a lot of learning as they go. And that is the base concern that I have is when you don't have somebody with experience to say, look, I've done it here, I've done it here, I've done it here. I've got experience in the medical, uh, cultivation. I've got experience doing this. I've run this business. I have that, you know, their entire experience is related to criminal justice system. That doesn't necessarily mean that they know how to run a business. And when you have a business that can lead to um, issues with a butters around them, this isn't like a, a restaurant that fails because their food stinks. This is, they are growing something that literally stinks and the neighbors and neighborhood around it could suffer the consequences if they're not doing it correctly. And if they're projecting that they're gonna make 49 million or 48 million in year one, and they expect to be able to maintain their business based upon those revenue streams, and they're learning as they go and they have complete failed crops because they don't know what they're doing yet. That means things are gonna suffer and what's gonna suffer is probably odor mitigation. That's, that to me is like the, the bare minimum, like, like boil everything down to the, to the lowest denominator 
that is the biggest issue that I have with with the presentation that, that we've been given at this point for for the um, for Queens Bridge. So it, it sounds to me like um, Sandy, that first bullet, like maybe. I mean, I know this says it's management and marijuana industry, but from what Cody said, it's more of just in business operations. Like, I don't know if that should be separated out because I, I, heard, I heard two different things. One is just in, in running a business in general. And then second to that is, okay, now it's marijuana and now we have specific areas of concern and cultivation and manufacturing. So I don't, I don't know if it would make sense to add, add a bullet in front of that to kind of pull we were talking about under, out. under the concerns. Yes. Okay. So I mean that that's like there's there's two pieces in there, right? The marijuana industry in general, mm -hmm. and then in in any any kind of commercial cultivation, large scale manufacturing of any kind. Right. But what I just heard from Cody was it, it's not even specific to the marijuana industry. It's specific to running a business. But isn't it? Or are we, isn't the concern that they don't have? experience in cultivation and manufacturing in any in any non-marijuana or marijuana business right that's that's kind of what that second part was saying I, th I think that they with the cfo being a really high level i think he's top 100 realtors in the nation i think he was top 50 at some point realtors in the nation he's got a lot of people that work for him i think he can run and, and consult on you know, running a business and, and the people side of it and that aspect. But real estate is different than manufacturing, uh, distribution and cultivation. Like nobody on their, uh, on their C-suite or anybody that has uh, presented to us in the, you know, half a dozen meetings that we've had with them has any of that. So it's, it's, you're right, Sandra, it's, it's the, it's the cultivation and the um, the manufacturing, but it's also the, the the business aspect of it too. Yeah, they don't have any business management experience either. Because I think I think Tiffany's sister was the one that was like the COO, or um, and and her her experience was limited to like retail establishments like Ann Taylor or something like that. And I think she came out like the last org chart we saw. I don't think she was even. She's not even in there. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not. I couldn't tell you. We saw so many different org charts with both of them. Yeah. It's insane. But none of them, none of them said, "Here's I've run these five successful businesses. I've have 15 years of experience in manufacturing and distribution, or I have 20 years of experience in cultivation, farming. You know." At this point, I'd say, can you grow corn on a large scale? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Nobody, nobody presented to us has ever said, I have experienced farming. Um, and especially yeah, nobody, indoor farming. Yeah, nobody even has any experience with, you know, in terms of basic business management, payroll, taxes. Right. Anything but that's where related I think to running a business. Yeah, the CFO, I think, is is definitely going to be able to do that. He runs payroll. Like, that stuff translates. Um, but it's just payrolling it. one guy. I mean, they've got, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and there's, there's organizations out there like PEOs and stuff. I don't know how that would actually work and whether or not, um, you know, professional employment organizations are allowed to work with the marijuana industry. But there are... There are ways to get around that kind of aspect of it and running that that piece of it, but like the key factors of whether or not this business is going to be successful, whether or not it's successful is, is less of a concern is, is if it fails and how long it takes to fail and what are the ramifications of the people around the business um, if it starts going downhill. So, so back to my point, I think that there's another bullet in there that talks about lack of experience um, in business management that is separate from the marijuana concerns. And Laura, I'm using your words, so if it should be something else. Okay. 
right? And then the um, financial projections, this was um, uh, the point that Cody made the last, last meeting we talked about this, that they seemed overly optimistic and without backup, um, there was no support to back them up basically. Uh, and then th the concern is if their projections are not realistic, would they uh, maintain their order mitigation? So they have an order, good order mitigation plan, but um, you know, if, if, would that be the first to go? I, I, I mean, if, if we're, if it does go forward and you know, you're willing to roll the dice on it, is there something within the HCA and this goes probably to the select boards, you know, role, is there, control to say if you don't adhere to x y and z then you know we pull your hca or we pull your license or you know if there's no ramifications or ways to to actually audit that they're doing what they say they're going to do you know do they get the hca and then they just get you know carte blanche to go do whatever they want and then swing uh, sink or swim i thought that or, was more what Paul said would be in the um, the planning board phase, right? The conditions, the money set aside, um, all of those pieces would would be would would come in and play um, at the planning board stage. Yeah, and that's that gets to you know our role is I I can't in all comfort say you know yeah we I, I'd recommend them without knowing are there going to be audits. Is it going to be something that the town is capable of, you know, holding them to? Because so if I it's not, then I would say I'm not comfortable supporting anything like that. Right. But I think the reason we put all these concerns in there was so that if it did go forward, that the um, planning board would have our concerns, right? right? They would they would be able to either, you know, hopefully address them and, and um, if they felt that was something they could do, or, you know, they could do address them at that point. So I mean, you know, we had we had decided a while back that we weren't going to vote to recommend or not recommend that we were just going to talk about you know strengths and concerns um, because ultimately you know it is up to select board to um, vote to decide whether they want the HCA but taking all this under consideration you know we're giving we're advising and we're um, hopefully giving them some information to um, consider as they as they make their decision so that that's kind of what this all was you know, circling around. And and I'm fine if that's still our position. Um, you know, I will say that we've had some meetings previous where things have been sent back to the EDC um, specifically, you know, for a recommendation. So right, I'm just, you know, I, I'm just letting you know that, that that has come out of the mouth of board members. So this would be one where there's no recommendation attached to it. And, you know, it's not gonna be the elephant in the room. Like we'll say that there's no recommendation attached to it here. Here is our feedback from the EDC and meeting with the applicant for, you know, X, X amount of meetings. Right, um, because I think you at one point had said if we didn't recommend, then you then it wouldn't go to the select board. And, and, I, and I guess I just don't feel like that's, I feel like it should go to the select board either way. And, they, and, they, and ultimately they need to make the decision. I mean, that's what we, that's what we did with um, Oasis. The select board made the decision ultimately. So I think that that and taking other things into consideration that are beyond us, right? That that um, that. But, we, but that I wouldn't compare those situations, Sandy, because that was completely different, right? We we were still having conversations based on something coming from the EDC, right? There there wasn't a vote right, of the select board. It was my recommendation that we don't move forward based on consultation with town council and the town manager. But I guess my point is, Renee, even if we recommended it, it still should have gone. Even if we didn't recommend it, it should have gone forward to you. Even if we if we um, did recommend it, you still could vote it down. So I just, I don't I don't see, and this is the conversation we had at a previous meeting, um, so I don't want to, you know, dredge up the whole thing again, but I just don't see the point of a recommendation when we're, this is, this is our, these are our concerns. These are, our, these are what we see as a strength. So we're giving, we're advising the select board um, if they want more, I'd say, okay, that's fine. They can come back. They can, they can ask us for more. Um, and, and that's the, the part of the issue is it's still not really a well-defined process as to what the select board as a whole is really looking for from the EDC. So that was how we defined it. If select board would like to redefine that in a different way, I think, I think that's a conversation that, that um, you know, is a, is a 
Is well, that, that's and that's why I mentioned that it, it was spoken from multiple members of the board that we look for the recommendations of the EDC, right? I think even the planning board sent something back to us, or um, not the planning board, finance committee, right? So I, I like I said, I'm I'm fine moving forward either way, but you know, it's it's going to be clear that we didn't feel comfortable to vote on as we had in the past because the question will come up because we've we've sent things to them with recommendations. So I just I just want to clarify that yes, that's still the desire of the commission to do that. But we didn't send Oasis with a recommendation. You didn't send either. Not neither of these did. Nothing nothing went to select board. That that's why I said Oasis is a completely different situation because something else happened outside of this process. Which I guess to my point, Renee, is why I say our recommendation doesn't really in the end. If 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 the if the select board is looking for information from us, and and for us to advise them based on our conversations, this is way more detailed than just saying yes we recommend no we don't recommend. This is this is giving them the information. Um, we're not we're certainly we're clearly not we're not standing behind or unanimously supporting them, and saying yes go for it we're gonna we're gonna stand behind them and 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 um, you know and. and encourage you to to sign the HCA, but I think we're we are at the point where where the select board needs to weigh in and I don't feel comfortable saying if we say don't recommend that it doesn't go to before the select board. I don't think that's a fair um you know place to put us in. I think this should go before select board they should make the decision because it is their decision. I mean the select board's gonna spend a half hour with an applicant, right? We've some, spent more time, so that's that's all I'm saying. And and again, it, it has been specific to recommendations. I, I it's fine if we want to continue forward on that path. Um, I don't have a problem with that at all. But you know, I just I want to be clear that yes, that's what we still want to do. So if there's, I mean, if you guys could don't care either way, then we'll move forward with, with just providing strengths and concerns. Um, can I ask a quick question? Yep. How many, how many licenses does the town currently have for cultivation and distribution? There's no limit. The only limit is in retail. Okay. Do we currently have anybody in the pipeline for cultivation? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. Those who have been have either run into property issues um, or they found better opportunities in different towns. So, so worst case scenario, we say we're comfortable supporting these folks. They get the HEA, they do a build out, the business fails in two or three years. It doesn't prevent the, us or the town from moving forward with other cultivators to maximize our revenue streams? It does not. Okay. But but I will I will tell you, I mean, something to consider, and I don't know if Paul was just about to chime in on this, right? Like, and, and this, I think we talked more about in our information sessions, more about cultivation and the potential risks and impact to the town than any of any other ones, right? So it's always been, we need to make sure that what we're doing is, is correct and that there are controls in place, um, from multiple angles. So Paul, did you want to add something to that? Well, again, um, as we talked about earlier, a lot of the issue, there are things under the planning board's jurisdiction they can review and, and enforce, such as odor mitigation. Um, the other thing though, I just, you know, again, my, my perspective, uh, Renee and I have talked about this with, with these is, you know, why not let them go forward and then let let their application speak for themselves when they go to the planning board? Because uh, the board's going to look very closely at these and see what, you know, if, if they're good, they'll they'll get through. If not, they'll, you know, they'll, you know, not support uh, the special permit. The one thing I also want to mention too here is while we don't have a limit on on issuing uh, permits for these sites. One thing we just want to keep in mind too is that we don't have that many vacant sites left. 
Mm -hmm. We have some, uh, and I'm not saying, you know, go for the perfect one that, you know, I'm not saying if it's, if it's not perfect, don't move it forward, but it's not like we have a huge swath of land um, in these areas that particularly when it comes to cultivation, where you probably don't want them very close to a neighborhood. Uh, so there's, there's, uh, you know, that's just a factor we want to consider that, um, you and know, it's, a, it's that, a vacant parcel it, that would be taken up. Yeah, Paul, Paul, that, that point is not lost certainly on me. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. And, and again, I'm not saying don't move it forward because we have these problems. I mean, a lot of these, some of these problems would be addressed by, by the board, by the planning board, uh, but yeah, um, we, the site, the, you know, and that's where the, the board has the, the benefit of, I think any of the, the, the planning board has the benefit over anyone else is they're going to see the detail site plans for us, for an area we, we, you don't get that. I mean, you don't get the opportunity to look at that. So um, issues like traffic and like, like odor, we just don't know what that looks like at this point. So, um, you know, but, but there are safeguards down the road as well. Well, we hope, <laughs> you know, I mean, what we don't want, what, you know, any, with any project that comes in, if it gets approved, we want to make sure we're not creating a future problem. Uh, this is a new use for us. Um, you know, we will have to look closely. We'll pro we would, and something like this, get a peer reviewer to look at odor mitigation and see what, you know, there are engineering firms out there that can look at odor mitigation and figure out how to, how to appropriately mitigate for it. But um, anyway, I'm rambling. Can I just can offer up? Sorry, go ahead. Can I just offer up one other um just suggestion um i agree with the third bullet under concerns financial projections are a bit optimistic so if they're not going to make their numbers the business may look for ways to cut corners i wouldn't limit it to just um i mean odor mitigation obviously is the one that could potentially impact the neighbors the most but i wouldn't I wouldn't make it a binary one for one. I would just say, um, you know, operational risks may present themselves in the event that they can't meet their financial, you know, their financial projections, environmental controls, just word it more broadly, environmental controls, physical security, things that could be a detriment to the town. And older mitigation would fall under that. I just wouldn't be so specific around odor mitigation. Can you say that first? Um, it, it, you know, just, I don't know, I, I, they don't use these words, but you know, they, they potentially could cut corners. You know, they, they, they're gonna look for ways to save money and they may, look to, they may look for ways to save money around, you know, the environmental controls that they have in place to protect the environment, which would include odor mitigation. And you know, disposing of waste material and, and water and things like that, as well as physical security, because those are the two things that would impact the town the most if they if they didn't stay focused on those areas. Uh, so what's the third one? Just physical security, just considerations in general. Sandy, I, I, appreciate, I would just change operational, operational risks could arise as opposed to could exist. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I'm, Cody's point's valid. If they get robbed, then, you know, it, that's on them and their insurance company. But I don't want to invite bad actors into the town because they know that there's a, tar there's a good target up the road because they've cut corners either.
Does that work? What I, the what I, way I wrote it, Mike? Yeah, I can't read the screen. I don't have my glasses on, Sandra, sorry. I just wrote, <laughs> operational risks could arise with environmental con controls such as odor mitigation, waste disposal, and phys physical security if projections are not realistic. <laughs> that sounds good. Anything else? And then the, sort of this, uh, just, you know, the, the bottom piece is just kind of a summary um, of our overall concerns with, with the, the company, that it's the first cultivation applicant um, that we would enter into an HCA with. So they've been getting considerable public and board scrutiny during the permitting process. Um, so the recommendation that we had to them was that if they had someone on staff with firsthand knowledge, mitigating the types of issues and concerns related to commercial cultivation and manufacturing, that that would, you know, be helpful. Um, and again, you know, the, the, the point that, that Tiffany kept making is that it was a relatively new industry, um, but the, the sort of counterpoint was the majority of our, our retail applicants recognized that there, that it was, you know, there was a weakness there and they brought with them corporate partners, consultants, and our lawyers with vast experience in the marijuana industry and regulations to guide them to remain on staff after the opening of the business. So they had, um, some consultants within there, but I don't think any that had committed to staying with them, you know, sort of on a full-time basis after the business opened. And then the, you know, no individual who has commercial cultivation or manufacturing experience, not just marijuana, but anything that would demonstrate an understanding of the resources they need to utilize, the ways they need to manage it in general, how to run the large scale operation they're proposing. So that was kind of the, the major points, I think. Uh, can you, Sandy, that last paragraph it references both companies. Can you just modify that? Yeah. Uh, Maybe if the company. Is that uh, where it says either? Is that supposed to be too like? It reads funny. We would feel more comfortable if the company had either employees and upper management partners. I think either referenced both. Is it direct reference back to two companies? I think e either was referencing either they have employees or they have paid consultants. But I think you can you already have the or in there. You can probably get rid of the either. Or if you say a company either had employees, just switch either and had. Can I just say, because you were saying three things, right? Is that the point? Yeah. Yeah. Had Maybe employees totally. management partners or paid consultants? Could I just take out the either? Yeah. Is there another page? No, or is that, that, that was just the, a that was carryover. The yep. That okay. Was. Okay. Any other um, edits for Sandy? Everybody comfortable with what's been put together? Okay, and we're just going to send this as a um, as our list of strengths and concerns. Did they, Renee? Did the select board ever get our recommend our our strengths and concerns for um, Oasis, or did the, there, did there was nothing sent from the EDC? No. Okay, so you, you, your decision came before that was able to be sent. Is that how the timing worked? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so so the way that the applicants are informed when, when we first connect of the process being, you come to the EDC, um, here are some items that we're looking to review um, based on the recommend, and, and it is specific to them saying, um, based on a recommendation from the EDC, then you'll be presented to the select board um, the recommendation will be, be reviewed and they'll have an opportunity to do a presentation um, and then a review of the HCA would occur. So there, it's, it's spelled out for them in the beginning that they would only go to the select board with a recommendation. It doesn't matter. It's you know, just something we said to the applicant. That doesn't mean that we can't, we can't push it forward without the recommendation. 
but those those um, expectations are outlined from the first time that I I have contact with them. So anyway, since Oasis, um, the HDA was never negotiated and they were never on um, the calendar, there was nothing that was presented from the EBC by them. And we hadn't gone through it either, which is why. So I wanna make sure this is prepared and ready for that next step whenever the select board chooses to um, have this on the agenda. Okay, if we're good to go, Sandy, if you want to um, send it to me and I'll put it in my packet. Um, Might and want then, to title it also. When you save it. And then who, who wants to speak to this um, on behalf of the EDC? Speak Don't all raise your hands at once. I don't speak, mind doing it. Speak to it where? At the, at the select board meeting. So I typically do, but I, I really wasn't involved in the meeting. So I think it's more appropriate for somebody who was in the last, I was involved in the first couple of meetings, but not the last, maybe it was just the last one I missed. The second, Laura, she self-appointed herself. <laughs> we don't have to vote on it, Mike, but thanks. <laughs> so Laura, I'll keep you apprised when everything else is aligned and it's ready to go on there. We'll make sure you can attend. That's fine. Sandy, if you can just make sure I have a copy of the final one, that'd be great. Thank you. Can you send it to everyone, Sandy, please? I figured you were gonna do that anyway. I can send that out. You rock, thank you. Okay, um, so I think that covers everything under business updates. I don't believe we have any meeting minutes to approve. Um, is there any other business to come before the board? The commission, I'm thinking the wrong group. Nothing else, okay. Um, so we have our next meeting for scheduled right now for Wednesday, November 3rd. Um, I will follow up on the venue for that meeting and then uh, circle back with everybody. The tentative, um, and I'll have to reach out to Frank and team on the sewer project plan related to the economic um, sustainability and growth for the town. Um, and then we just have the holding meeting logistics if, if we wanna talk about um, changing meetings beyond then. So. Um, I'll add on here too, for us, I think maybe the primary focus for us is really to talk more about the partnership and kind of form out um, a plan in that regard, something that, that we'd each be able to walk away with and, and take to anybody and, and present it consistently. Um, are there any other updates that we'd wanna talk about then? I think I could probably keep We'll probably just do maybe an update on the town meeting. Is everyone going to be there? It's Monday, right? It is Monday, Monday yeah. October 25th, 7 o'clock at the North High School Auditorium, and I'm going to be there. I, Excellent, I Peter. Be there at least for part of it, hopefully for the more important parts. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, well, great. I think that's it. Um, if there's nothing else to discuss, give me one second here. Okay, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, we do roll call, Laura? Yes. Mike? Yes. Sandy? Yes. Denise? Yes. And I too vote yes. We are adjourned as of 8.49 p.m. Uh, thank you everyone for your time and discussion tonight. And I will be in touch um, before our next meeting just on the logistics. And the next meeting is scheduled Wednesday, November 3rd. Thanks guys. Have a great night. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night everyone. Good night.